Amen. Brother Scott Hans said today they went to a gospel singing just in one of the songs that the group sung. Said that if you got to be somewhere, don't ask me about Jesus. In other words, if you're in a hurry, don't ask me about Jesus because it's going to take a while. Amen. We're going to have to sit down and discuss this because I can't just give you something in passing. It'll take me all day and then two nights and a month of Sundays and then we still just barely scratch the surface of what God has done for me. The old church used to say, you don't know like I know what He's done for me. You can't tell it like I can what He's done for me. I don't know what He's done for you today, but He brought me up out of darkness and set my feet on Because see, Pharaoh and them had a bunch of gods. Amen. They had a cow god, a frog god. I ain't joking. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. They had all they see all the ten plagues that were sent out there. Those those all attacked not just the Egyptians, but the gods that they served and worshipped. Right. Amen. Amen. He said, "Who am I going to tell them? Send me down there." And God said, "You just tell them I am that I am." I am that I am. So the Hebrew boys, if they had knowledge of that, and they probably did, they might have told King Nebuchadnezzar, who is this God? He's the I am that I am. That's who this God is. And he said, who shall deliver? You know the devil says that to you sometimes. He said, who is this God that's going to deliver you out of my hands? And you need to look at him and say, he's already delivered me out of your hands. Amen. He kicked your face in on Calvary. And you got no more control and no more dominion over me. So they asked these boys, they probably Pentecostal. Hallelujah. And I don't say that in a denominational kind of way. They probably believed in shouting, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. He said, Who is this God? Don't you love it when the devil gets, you know, arrogant? Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. He's always been that way. Amen. You remember what the Bible says about him whenever he was the beautiful angel there? He ain't beautiful no more. Amen. He can make himself look beautiful, but honey, when you get below that, oh, okay. he is one ugly sucker. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right. You'll crawl up in bed with him because you thought he looked good, but by the time he gets done with you, when morning comes yeah. and the covers are rolled back and you see the devil for who he really is, amen, when you see the devil for who he really is, he is ugly, amen, he is sin personified, he is a demon, hallelujah, out of the pits of hell, he is ugly because the evilness and wickedness is all over us. Bring it on, bring it on. But you got in bed with him because you thought he's good looking. That's right. Amen. You're probably about half drunk. <laughs> As for a plane, well, it's truth anyway. We got people going to the bar and getting drunk and jumping into bed with whoever, and then they wake up the next morning and they're like, what in the world did I do? Amen. That's the way it is with the devil. That's plain preaching, but that's the way it is with the devil. He will, he will promise to take you for the ride, and He will. Yes. Right. Sin will keep you longer than you want to stay. Amen. Amen. It'll take you longer. It'll take you farther than you want to go. Keep you longer than you want to stay. It'll cost you more than you ever wanted to pay. Amen. When He gets through with you, He will throw you over on the scrap heap of humanity and walk off with His evil laugh, saying, "You know, I've really done something here. I've destroyed them because that's what He's got in plan for you. Amen. He plans on destroying you. Amen. He plans on killing you." See, he's mad and he's been mad for a long time because he can't make it and you can't. Amen. 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 He done got a vision of heaven. Yes. 
Yes. And he knows it can't be his. Amen. So he's mad, and here he is mad at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And he says, the king says, who is this God that will deliver you out of my hands? And no doubt they begin to tell him, you know. And the next verse, verse 16, the Bible says that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, now, sir, they, didn't, they don't say nothing about they had to you know, have a meeting and decide what they's going to do. Amen. It says that they answered the king, you know what they said? Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. See, he may have assumed that all this tough talk is going to get them to try to decide whether they're going to compromise or not. But they done decided they wasn't going to compromise. Listen, the closer we get to the end, the more you're going to have to decide whether you're going to compromise or not. Amen. 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 The closer we get to the end, the more evil and wicked the world gets, the more you're going to have to come face to face with whether you're going to compromise or not. Amen. Amen. You may already compromise, but if you have, that's all right. They say, well, it ain't all right, but there's still hope for you. Amen. Amen. There's time for you to get back on the straight and narrow way. Amen. They were being threatened with fire. They were being threatened with being thrown into the fire. Sometimes all it takes is a lawsuit for us. For us to compromise. Listen, they don't want you preaching on homosexuality because you may get sued. Amen. Hate speech. They may come in and arrest you, Oscar, for preaching on homosexuality. You'd be surprised how many preachers that shut up simply because they were afraid they might get arrested if they preached on homosexuality. Amen. I don't know if there's any law enforcement people here today or not, but I'll tell you what God says. That homosexuality is an abomination in His sight. Amen. Amen. You were born that way. It is an abomination. It is a sin in the eyes of God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Bring it on, preacher. They said, <laughs> they said what did they say? We're not careful to answer thee. They wasn't careful. They said, we, got to, we, we, we don't have to think about it. You know, suppose, maybe, perhaps... He said, you boys talking over. I said, we don't have nothing to talk about. There ain't nothing to talk about. We're serving God, the one true God, and we ain't going to bow down to your image. Amen? Amen. We shouldn't have to think twice whether we're going to compromise or not. We should have an answer ready. Right. Amen? When somebody says something or makes some off-the-cuff comment, we ought to be standing ready to plant a seed. Amen? Amen? I was standing at McDonald's in Oldsboro, Kentucky one night, and I had my Jesus hat on. And there was a man that walked up there and he said, what's your hat saying? And he said, oh, I see what it says. It says, walk with Jesus on the front. It says, I love Jesus on the back. And uh, he said, I see what it says. And I reached over and took him with the arm. And I said, do you know him? Have you accepted him as Lord and Savior? Yeah. He said, well, I was raised Catholic, Bless him, Lord. but I've got away from it. I said, well, but do you know Jesus? He said, well, there's a lot of religions. There's a lot of gods. I said, yeah, there's a lot of gods, but they but one way. That's right. Amen. I said, there's a lot of religions. There's a lot of gods out there, but they but one way. And I said, that's Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Amen. He said, oh, there's a lot of ways, there's a lot of ways to God. I said, uh-uh. Jesus said, I'm the way, I'm the truth, and I'm the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. And I don't know whether it took or not, but I planted seed while I had an opportunity to plant it. Amen. I said, I'm fixing to pray for him. You know what he said? He said, you know what? You're the third preacher this week that I've talked to, and all of them said he's going to pray for me. Amen. Amen. And all of them was Jesus preachers. Yeah. So somehow I believe in my heart that God got a hold of this man. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. But you've got to be ready when somebody says something. You've got to be ready to have an answer. That's right. You can't stand there and, uh, blah, 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 blah. here's Oscar's number, amen, because they may not have time to call Oscar. Right. You need to tell them about Jesus. He's right. the only way. Amen. Yeah. So they said, we're not careful to answer you. Listen to what they say. This is the strange thing I want to tell you about, and I'm going to hush. They said, if it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And He will deliver us out of Thine hand, O King. And we can stop right there and the church can shout. Yeah. Our God is able. He's going to do it. He's going to do it. But see, faith went one step farther than that. Faith went one step farther than that. They said our God is able. He will do it. But the next thing they said is, but if not. Listen to that. But if not. But if he don't, Brother Oscar, yeah. if he don't do it, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. 
You see, it's it's one thing when you have faith, when you stand by the bedside of a loved one and you pray for them and God heals them. Amen. And that increases your faith. Yeah. And you get closer to the Lord. But what if He don't heal them? That's the way it's supposed to be. The Hebrew boy said, God is able. He will. But if He don't, I want to talk to you for a minute about what happens when He don't. Do you know as a pastor how many people you see turn their back and give up on God because He didn't do what they thought He should do? Amen. These Hebrew boys said that we know God's able. We know that He'll do it. But if He don't see that, wouldn't, that wouldn't fly too good in the face of these preachers we got today because they say that's talking negativity. Yeah. Honey, faith never made any more strong proclamation than it did when it says God can, but if He don't, yeah. I'm still going to serve Him. Amen. I'm Praise still going to serve Him. Amen. It makes me wonder sometimes our attitudes whenever God don't do what we want Him to do. I wonder if we're serving the miracle worker or we're serving the miracles. Amen. 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 Are we serving the healer or are we serving the healings that we get? Yeah. These Hebrew children said God's able to do it, but if He don't, we're still not going to bow down to your image. What happens when you don't, church? Sometimes you pray and you pray and you pray and it don't go the way you want it to go. Amen. Right. Sister Jane, that's whenever you say, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Amen. 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 Are you willing today to accept whatever happens and still keep your faith in Him? Amen. That's what these, that's what these, you better be ready. Right. That's what these Hebrew boys did. They said, if He don't do it, we're still going to serve Him. Yeah. If He don't heal you today, God wants to know what you're going to do. If you don't get your healing, are you still going to serve Him? Amen. If you don't get your loved one healed, are you still going to serve Him? Amen. If you don't get the financial blessing that you've been needing for so long, are you still going to serve Him? Are you still? The Bible says when He returns, will He find faith? He's looking for somebody that will hold on to Him and stand on His Word. Whether they feel it, whether they see it, whether anything happens, whether they get their prayers answered or not, they still believe God. They still believe in God. That what happens when he don't? Most of the time, we do like babies. Do like little children if we don't get our way. No matter how old we are, whether you're 75 in here today or whether you're 45 or 25 or 15 or 5. We talk about them babies, you know, when they go in Walmart and they throw a fit because they don't get that new, you know, slinky or whatever they sell today. They throw a fit. I didn't get it. I didn't get it. That's what we do. When things don't go our way, we get mad. God don't love me no more. Oh my goodness, that preach. I don't know if I'm preaching, but that'll preach. God don't love me no more. Why? Because He didn't do what I was asking Him to do. Listen, God has already done. He has already proven His love to you. If taking the stripes on his back didn't prove it, and if taking the crown of thorns in his head didn't prove it, and if carrying that old cross up Calvary's hill after he should have been dead didn't prove it, and laying down on the cross uh, and taking those nails through his feet and his hands, uh, if that did not prove his love for you, that new car ain't going to prove it. That's right. Amen. 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 That new car ain't going to prove it. Right. If he never answered another prayer,